I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will tell of your name to my kin. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Well, I very much feel that um, it's with our spirit when we've been coming. I, I've been enjoying it this week, I must admit. It, it, I'm sorry Peter's not here, and those of you watching at home who are disappointed. There's, there's what, two friends of mine in London, and they watch it regularly. They were originally from, from Liverpool. And uh, they're tremendous people. Uh, Tony gets a little bit confused now and again. And apparently, Joan has told me that when he sees somebody like me on, he says, well, who's that strange man that's come <laughs> on now? <laughs> so, so I'm sorry, Tony. It's, it, it's me instead of Peter. But, uh, but I feel so welcome. And thank you very much. Because what we're doing is we're, we're, we're journeying, aren't we? We're, we're journeying. Um, with the resurrection, with the resurrected Jesus, uh, towards our own Easter. Easter isn't something that happened in the past. Rem remember the vestment, this beautiful vestment. I'll never forget it. It's one of the nicest I've ever seen, where it says, the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we've been thinking about, well, that's true, just as John said it, but the word becomes flesh and dwells among us now. So it's, it's not the past, it's now. And this week, we've been listening to that wonderful conversation that got Nicodemus all confused. Jesus speaking to Nicodemus, but really speaking to you and me. So we have a little bit more of that conversation today in the Gospel. So let's open our hearts and our minds to Jesus speaking to us. Sisters and brothers, let's acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. As we recall year by year the mysteries by which through the restoration of its original dignity human nature has received the hope of rising again. We earnestly beseech your mercy Lord that what we celebrate in faith we may possess in unending love through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever. Amen. I forgot to mention that we're remembering, especially in this Mass, Norma and Michael McGarvey. Thanks, sir. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The high priest intervened with all his supporters from the party of the Sadducees. Prompted by jealousy, they arrested the apostles and had them put in the common jail. But at night, the angel of the Lord opened the prison gates and said as he led them out, go and stand in the temple and tell the people all about this new life. They did as they were told. And they went into the temple at dawn and began to preach. When the high priest arrived, he and his supporters convened the Sanhedrin. This was the full Senate of Israel and sent to the jail for them to be brought. But when the officials arrived at the prison, they found they were not inside. So they went back and reported. We found the jail securely locked and the warders on duty at the gates. But when we unlocked the door, we found no one inside. When the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard this news, they wondered what this could mean. Then a man arrived with fresh news. 
At this very moment, he said, the men you imprisoned are in the temple. They are standing there preaching to the people. The captain went with his men and fetched them. They were afraid to use force in case the people stoned them. The word of the Lord. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. This poor man called and the Lord heard him and rescued him from all his distress. This poor man called and the Lord heard. The angel of the Lord is encamped around those who revere him to rescue them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He is happy who seeks refuge in him. Please stand for the Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ has risen and shone upon us, whom he redeemed with his blood. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost but may have eternal life. For God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world but so that through him the world might be saved. No one who believes in him will be condemned. But whoever refuses to believe is condemned already because he has refused to believe in the name of God's only Son. On these grounds is sentence pronounced that though the light has come into the world, people have shown they prefer darkness to the light because their deeds were evil. And indeed, everybody who does wrong hates the light and avoids it, for fear their actions should be exposed. But the, those who live by the truth come out into the light, so that it may be plainly seen that what they do is done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. So we're, we're listening yesterday and today, we're listening to what Jesus is saying to you and me through Nicodemus. He's talking to Nicodemus, but really, don't forget, God dwells with us now. He's really speaking to us. That's the wonder of reading the scriptures. And the best way of doing it, by the way, is, is to give yourself time to read it beforehand or, or afterwards. And I always find as well, in, in the Gospels, we get little chunks. They, they don't give the whole lot. And, and you lose some of the continuity on that. So you perhaps, if you've got time, and you, when you've got time at home, just five minutes, it makes such a difference when you're able to actually read the whole story, the whole conversation. So remember, at the beginning of this chapter in John, he, he says about Nicodemus being a bit nervous. He was, he was high... He had a high profile in, in the Jewish religion. Uh, he was a Pharisee, and he'd come during the night. He hadn't, he hadn't plucked up courage to come in the daytime in case anybody saw him. So this conversation, we're imagining, is taking place in the darkness. And I think that's, in a sense, what Jesus is particularly emphasizing in this passage that we've had today. Yesterday, we were thinking about how he was saying to Nicodemus, do you know how the, wind, how, you, how the wind feels on your face? And you don't know where the winds come from, you don't know where the wind's going, but that's like the spirit coming on each one of us. That's what he was saying at first. Now he goes back to the idea of Nicodemus coming in the dark, probably smiling. He's recognized that Nicodemus is a bit nervous. So he says, he says if, you're, if you're in the dark, it's because you're afraid. It's because you, you don't 
you don't remember that God is actually with you. And I think probably when John was, or whoever was writing this gospel, they were remembering back. This was written about something that happened before Jesus rose from the dead, but it's written afterwards. And it means that um, in a way they're remembering, well, I wonder how it's speaking to us today, just as we're trying to remember or try to understand how Jesus is speaking to us today. So they were doing the same. And that's probably what they were thinking when they put down, do you remember when we got arrested? Because that's a wonderful, that wonderful reading that Eleanor's just read for us from the Acts of the Apostles, where, don't forget, they'd started off in a, in a room with the doors locked because they were scared. And then they'd had a visit and they'd gone out and they'd started preaching. And their fears were justified because they got into trouble immediately. And in that first reading, we, we, they're in prison. So that's a fine mess Jesus has got them into. But just as an angel went to tell, I wonder if the angel, when he went to tell Mary about the Annunciation we were thinking about on Monday, I wonder if he knocked at the door. <laughs> or did the, did the angel knock at the door in the prison? I don't know how they did it because, because apparently the guards didn't see them go. But the next day, they're there preaching again. It's, it's almost like a pantomime, isn't it? Because the Sanhedrin then sort of say, well, well, send to the prison, bring them in, we want to talk to them. So the guards go off, they come back. They're not there. And then somebody else comes in, they're actually out again preaching. I mean, they must have been tearing their hair in the Sanhedrin, sort of saying, you know, where, how is this happening? And in a sense, I think that what the, the, when they were remembering this, the, the apostles, they were saying, you remember when Jesus spoke to Nicodemus and he was talking about come out of the dark. Prisons come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, don't they? And prisons are dark. And it's not necessarily just when you're in a, a physical prison, but in, in other ways too. And I feel that what we're being asked about today or what Jesus is saying to us today is whatever prisons you feel at times you might be in, or wherever you see darkness, don't be afraid. I'm with you. Come on out into the light. And as always, it's important, again going back to the vestment, it's not what happened in the past, it's where did it happen? Where does it happen today? Well, I, I, I can give you uh, where I thought it happened to me yesterday. It happened to me twice yesterday. After Mass yesterday, we finished what time? About quarter to eleven. And I had another meeting, which didn't start until about one o'clock. It was another part of Liverpool. So I had an hour or so. I thought, well, what am I going to do? It was raining. I thought, I'm probably going to lock the church anyway. I don't want to stay here on my own. Where shall I go? And I thought, I know what I'll do. It was a friend of mine who lives just round the corner in Squire Street. And she's feeling a bit down at the moment. I'll go around and see if I can give her a bit of encouragement. And her name is Kemi, Kemi Ryan. And she and her sister Natasha are two wonderful women um, who, they ended up in prison. And when they were in the darkness of the prison, they thought, we can't stay here. We've got to come out. They got an eight year prison sentence. They'd been caught smuggling drugs in. They'd gone to get some money for a friend who wanted to get married. Stupid, stupid, stupid mistake. They got caught first time, ended up in prison, eight year sentence. But because of the way they behaved and because they were together, I think the prison authorities saw these are special, these women. And they came out after four years, which was in 2007. And they said, what we want to do is we want to turn our lives around. We want to, how do we get out of this mistake that we've made? Because even though they were out of prison, there was still a darkness. They were coming up against racism. They were coming up against all sorts of obstacles. They wanted to, to lead their lives and lead good lives, but they weren't really allowed to do it. So they said, well, we'll start our own organization. And so they set up this organization, which I, I won't go on too long about, which thankfully I've been allowed to be part of it for the last five or six years, which they called Reformed. And at the moment, they work with, with, with young people, trying to encourage them, trying to say the same message that Jesus is giving. They're, they're saying that same message. They might not always put it in the words that Nicodemus or, or the Gospel puts. But there is, a, there is a low point at the moment because 
they're running out of resources, they don't know how they're going to keep going. So I thought, I'll go round and cheer, them, cheer Kemi up. So I went round, she let me in, and we started talking. And before I knew what was happening, she was telling me about a plan she's got, that on this coming Saturday, she's found out that there's a, a, a woman coming out of prison after a six year sentence. She's got a five days out as a preparation for her coming out. And she's arranged to go and see her and help her. And she said, she needs healing. She says, we know what it's like. She needs healing. And she says, she says, she needs God. So it wasn't just she was going to go around and sort of say, well, you know, cheer up. So I was suddenly hearing, it was me going around to cheer Kemi up. And I found myself being cheered up by what she was telling me. So, I mean, I could go on and on about that, but it's an example that this isn't just theoretical. It's where is the spirit blowing on my... I came out of 22 Squire Street yesterday feeling cheered up for somebody who hasn't got anything very much and is worrying about somebody else coming out of prison. And that's where it's about. That's what it's about. Second example. Last night I looked at my phone and found I'd missed a message when another dear friend, Joanne, who's a social worker working with dementia patients in St. Helens, had got tickets to take her mother, who's 78, and her sister to, is there a show on called Ghostbusters at the moment? I think there is. I think it's, I think it's on at the Empire. She'd found tickets anyway, and she'd gone there. Everything was going well. Cut a long story short. Um, Joanna was waiting for her mother and her sister who'd gone to pick the car up, and a stolen car in Manchester, run, going at high speed, came, hit the car, mother very seriously injured, she's, she's in hospital, sister, her arm is burned, Joanna wasn't hurt. So I rang her last night, it was quite late on, and again I was expecting she's going to be really down. And of course she's down, of course she's really worried about her mother, she wasn't minimising it. But she says, you know, you know, Nicholas, she says, um, I know that God is with me. And when you hear somebody saying that, worrying about her mother, she's had to take time off work because obviously going back to, to the hospital. That, to my mind, is what this gospel is about. It's about the spirit blowing. So two examples yesterday where I thought I was going in to cheer somebody up. Quite the opposite. And I think that's what we need to learn. Where, where is God speaking to us, particularly through people who are suffering? Very last point for Peter again. It's one of these days he's probably going to ring up and sort of say, when are you going to stop? But I'll give you one last example about prisons or about locks. And you'll have heard this story before. In fact, I've probably told it you before. You know before a pope is elected, they have a conclave. And all the cardinals get locked in. <laughs> I'm sure we've got nice things going on here. But it's, 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 it's got an image of like, this is very important. And apparently, in the last conclave, um, after Pope Benedict had, had resigned, um, and before they'd elected Pope Francis, they asked him to lead one of the masses during the conclave. And you'll have heard the story. And apparently during the mass, he, he, he got up and... He probably doesn't talk as much as I do, but nonetheless, he sort of got up and he says, can anybody hear a knocking at the door? And the cardinal's probably going to say, no, what's up with him? What's he on about? He says, there's a knocking at the door. So he said, well, if you don't, don't hear it, I'm telling you who it is. It's, it's Christ, and he's knocking at the church door. And everybody sort of thought, oh, we've got to open the door to let him in. And Francis said, no. He's knocking at the door for us to let him out. We've got him trapped in. So this is in the conclave. I mean, if you wanted anybody to say, if you want to be Pope and you're going to preach something like that, you, you must have to need your head examining. Because a lot of them sort of say, what's he on about? Paradoxically, of course, they elected him. So the, the, the message that our Pope is, is giving us so wonderfully is it's out there. It doesn't mean we stop coming here, but we come with doors that are open so that we're going out because that's where the spirit, that's where the wind is blowing. We don't feel the wind in it. Well, we do. 
But if you know what I mean, the analogy is that it's out there. You remember when Pope Francis, you, well, you may not remember, but when the Pope is just elected, they bring him out onto the balcony at St. Peter's, and there's usually television there, and there's crowds of people, and the white smoke's gone up and all that. And usually it's a, it's a very solemn sort of like a big chant and a, a blessing. And apparently Pope Francis, when he came out, all he said was, good evening, bona sera. That was his opening words, a very human greeting which in a sense is exemplifying what Pope Francis is about. So I feel that it's not just individually, it's, it's where are we as a church learning what he calls, what Pope Francis is encouraging us to call synodality, which is a word, a technical word. What it means is just listening to one another and listening to where God is speaking in the reality of our world today. So I'll stop there, but um, the last bit of the story about Nicodemus I mean, Jesus says to him today, don't stay in the dark. And you know the last time that we see Nicodemus in the Gospels is on Good Friday. Do you remember? Jesus has died. Joseph of Arimathea goes to Pilate and says, can I take the body down? And, you know, he says yes. And who goes with him to help? Nicodemus. And it's almost as if the whole story has come full circle. So the man who went in fear and nervous has listened and has come out. So perhaps let's just think about that in terms of our own lives now. Father in heaven, we thank you for bringing us here and making us worthy to listen to your word speaking to us through your son in the gospel and in the scripture readings today. Be pleased now to hear our words as we put our prayers to you. And let's pray for Pope Francis, remembering his encouragement to us to open and listen ourselves to, to one another in, in our world today. Let's pray that his prayer and his vision and his hope will be fulfilled throughout the world, through our church. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. I'd like to pray especially for, for Kemi and Natasha, his, her sister, and their little organization reformed, that, that God will continue to be with them and that through them, they will continue to show the presence of Jesus in a world that at times is very dark and full of people who in one way or another find themselves in prison. Lord, hear us. I want to pray for Joanne, whose mother and sister were injured in the car accident, in the car, yeah, the car accident, that she continues to receive the strength she needs to continue supporting them and all her family and we pray for all those who are suffering um, through whatever reason and that they and those who care for them are given the strength they need lord hear us lord, and especially when when suffering is caused through human violence let's pray for all those who are suffering in places of war we obviously think especially of Gaza, Palestine, Israel, but also of Ukraine and Russia. And let's pray that God's spirit will, will reach through to the people of violence who are keeping people apart and causing them to hate one another. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray for all those on the list here who are, who are sick, whom you love, Lord. I won't go through the list. It's a long list, but is there anybody special that you would like to remember? We remember especially Maureen. I keep missing Maureen when I come here, you know, so remember, tell her we're thinking of her. And all those that you know, who would you like to mention? Julie, 
Now, put in my brother and my nephew as well. I thank you for the prayers for them. Be with them, Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. And let's remember all those who have gone before us, who've died. Is there anybody special that you want to mention? So for all those we love, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. And let's ask Mary to add her voice to ours. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Listen to our prayers, O Lord, and be pleased to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have all received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift your Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together with the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, 
graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Malcolm, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. And let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Saviour gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of that peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, and have appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways of life to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's say the prayer for the parish. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us, bout us, mold us, fill us, beat us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. And may you... Hallelujah. forgot the hallelujah. Sorry, Lord. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and may, the... may you feel the breeze of the Spirit on your face, even if you don't know where it's come from or where you didn't expect it from. See you all tomorrow if you can. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.